संस्कृते वक्तव्यम किम अधीतेशु पाठेशु किमपि पद्यम स्मर्यते वा इति आदौ प्रश्न पद्यम एकम पद्यम पद्यम इति तो न्यायते खलु हां <laughs> हां अधीतेशु किम किमपि स्मरति हम्म एनीथिंग यू रिमेंबर एनी वर्स दैट यू हैव स्टडीड पद्यम अथवा वदन वद छायामन्यस्य निर्दिष्टमस्ति भारतीय संस्कृति अधिकृत किंचित वक्तव्य संस्कृति अधिकृत वक्तव्य कलचर ऑफ भारत तदनुगुण छाया वृक्षा the trees produce shadow for the sake of others chaya manyasya kurvanti swayam tishthanti chatape si swayam atape tishthanti so they themselves stand in hot sun 
but they generate a region which is cool for the sake of others. So they bear the heat and produce a space which is cool for others. See, chayam anyasya kurvanti svayam tishthanti chatate phalanyapi parartsaya so even the fruits that they produce is only for the sake of others. Kalanyapi parathaya. So then it is said, Vrikshaha satpurusha eva. So what is eva? Eva. Eva means like. Okay, simile. So Vrikshaha satpurusha eva. So the trees are like noble people. The trees are like noble people. <clears throat> so the example that is presented is noble people for the sake of trees. So should it be the other way around? No. Something which is known is to be taken as a simile to illustrate something which is unknown. Right? This is how you say. Upamana and Upameya. This is what they say. Vrikshaha Satpurushaha Eva Purvanti. This is what is said. Vrikshaha Satpurusha Eva. So the activity of something which is generally considered to be a non-conscious being is illustrated with the activity of a conscious being. Vrikshaha Satpurushaha Iva. So this consciousness can be graded at various levels. So this is conscious or not conscious. So it may be discussed at great length and at one level one can say that everything is conscious entity only. But the degree of consciousness keeps changing, varying widely. So as far as human being is concerned, so the, the level of consciousness that he has so has matured enough to ensure that they consciously take care of other beings. So that is the only distinction between human species and other species. After all, so everything is ultimately a bunch of some particles. Correct? So we live in a galaxy. What is it called? You know? Milky Way galaxy, right? So how many stars does it have? You have studied something little bit? No? So where did this earth come from? Have you studied? It is a part of solar system. This much you know. Solar system is considered to be part of Milky Way galaxy. And Milky Way galaxy is a part of the universe. We leave it at that. So this origin of universe is thought about and uh, as per today's understanding, so it is as old as some 14 billion years. How old is the earth? Uh, about 4.3 billion years. You have studied? No? Okay. So before that, what was it? Mm -hmm. 
before this was born, what was it? So this Bharatiya Sanskriti, when we say, so it ponders about these deep questions also and the science also ponders about these deep questions. So before we are born, so before you come into existence, you were some fluid somewhere, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this much you know. So this fluid takes a shape and then it comes out into the world. And similarly, different forms of fluid will be there in different animals. In different forms will be there. It takes some shape. So it lives for some time. Mm. It does certain activity. And then it merges back. Right? So the lifetime that we are talking about is hardly 60 years, 70 years, maximum 90 years or 120 years. But this is nothing compared to the billion years that we are talking about. Okay. We are talking about some billions of years. And this is uh, just like a small speck. It is like a mosquito and the whole earth. Okay. So that is how we are talking about. So during this short span of time that we live, what are we supposed to do? This is the Bharatiya Samskriti. They talk about this. There is a very, very short span of time in which we live and then we disappear. This appearance and disappearance of a human being is for a certain period. Consider a mosquito. So it has much shorter lifetime. So compared to mosquito, our lifetime is much large. Compared to our lifetime, the lifetime of certain other creatures is much large. So this is how it goes. The dog lives maybe 15-20 years. So we live three times, four times that period. So this is how it goes for different organisms. So this appearance in some form for some time. And then disappearance is something which is the very nature of things. So when we are here, so what do we do? So this is what is primarily conveyed in this verse. Chaya manyasya kurvanti svayantishthanti chatape halanyapi parartaya Vrikshaha Satpurusha Iva. So this is what he says. The Satpurusha are those who by nature so they try to reach out to others. Satpurusha are those who care for other beings. Not necessarily one's own family but to a much larger part of the society. See, one cannot be doing some service to the whole world, but can do something which will benefit so a small surrounding. Okay. So this is what is called Paropakara. Okay. So this Vriksha is taken as an example in certain other verses. See, there is a similar verse like this. Paropakaraya phalanti vrikshaha Paropakaraya phalanti vrikshaha Paropakaraya phalanti vrikshaha Paropakaraya vahanti nadhyaha Paropakaraya duhanti gavaha Paropakaraya duhanti gavaha Paro Pakar Arthamidam Shariram 
So this is another verse which speaks of Bharatiya Sanskriti. So it puts uh, the same idea in a very powerful way with more examples. So in that verse, we saw tree and Satpurusha. So here it is said, the Paropakaraya Phalanti Vrikshaha Vrikshaha Phalanti So what for? Paropakaraya Similarly Paropakaraya Vahanti Nadhyaha The rivers flow. It only benefits the civilization around that river. Paro Pakaraya Vahanti Nadhyaha. Then he says, Paro Pakaraya Duhanti Gavaha. The cows produce milk for the sake of others. And finally he says, Paro Pakarartham Idam Shariram. Shariram is this physical form. Okay. So this physical form that we procure. Its physical form is procured by us. And uh, there is a certain conscious being which activates this physical sharira. The hand functions, the eye see, we eat. So all of them are happening based on a certain impulse that we receive. So I speak, you listen. So all of these things are happening. So there is a conscious being which tries to drive you to listen, which tries to drive you to function in different forms, different ways, at different points of time. So this conscious being is what we call as Chaitanya. Okay. And the Sharira is just Jada. So, besides the capacity that it has, if we look at what makes this insentient being to get into activities, is a certain force. And this force is stated in different ways, different terms in different scriptures. So you call it by the name Atman, you call it by the name Sat, you call it by the name Chit. Okay. So there are different things. But one has to accept that there is something which is associated which sets all these sense organs as well as motor organs to function in a particular way. Now, how do we set this to function? It's like some software which is written, so which makes this function in a particular way. So the software that is written is what we call as samskara. Okay. So as per the samskara, this individual functions. The functioning of the individual cannot be changed all of a sudden. As you cannot change this all of a sudden, the way it functions is what it will function. You have to rewrite something. Once we rewrite, it will function differently. So all these things that are, are being attempted is to generate this samskara. How you react, how you visualize things. So that will make you conduct yourself in a way by which you will be either beneficial or you would be a burden to the society. So, do we want to be beneficial or do we want to be a burden? So, this being beneficial is what they call as paropakara. Understand? So, being beneficial. So, the sharira should be functioning in such a way that it is beneficial to the society. So there they give these examples. Paropakaraya phalanti vrikshaha. 
ರೋಪಕಾರಾಯ ದುಹಂತಿ ಗಾವ ರೋಪಕಾರಾಯ ವಹಂತಿ ನದ್ಯ ಪರೋಪಕಾರಾರ್ಥ ಶರೀರ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನದರ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಡ್ರಾಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಶಾವತಾರ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಹರ್ಡ್ ದಶಾವತಾರ ಯು ನೋ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ನರಸಿಂಹ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಪರಶುರಾಮ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೆನ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಈಶ್ವರ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ again taking a physical form so like this atman takes a physical form okay so it may be in the form of lakshmi it may be in the form of natesha some name will be given once the sharira comes into existence this association of this chaitanya with some achetana is what we call as janma okay. so this avatara that we talk rama krishna buddha kalki whatever is once again association of a certain chetana is to some physical form but there are some special physical forms. what is the speciality between our janma and the janma of rama and krishna so the distinction is so that is by choice and this is by default <laughs> you have no choice okay so this is the distinction there also the sharira goes off here also the sharira goes off and those choices that have been made are all meant for very specific purpose and it is only for paropakara if we have the statement in bhagavad gita ah uh, any verse paritranaya sadhunam hmm ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಪರಿತ್ರಾಯ ಸಾಧು ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಎನ್ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ದ ನೋಬಲ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ಗುಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿನಾಶಾಯ ದುಷ್ಕೃತ ಸೊ ಟು ಎನ್ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ದ ದಿ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಫೆಲೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪನಿಷ್ಡ್ and to establish dharma i will keep coming again and again so this is what he says so there it is by choice for a certain specific purpose and the specific purpose has been nicely clarified in this vars paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkrutam so the activity that is taken by bhagavan is only for paropakara and this has been nicely brought out in another verse which says paropakriti kaivalye repeat paropakriti kaivalye paropakriti kaivalye anybody has heard this ಜನಾರ್ದನಾರ್ದನಾ 
இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் பரோபகாரா த்ரூ திஸ் வர்ஸ் ஹி சேஸ் விஷ்ணு ஹேட் த சாய்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹி ஹாப்பிலி டுவெல்லிங் இன் மை குண்டா everybody is nicely serving him he could have been happily enjoying his stay in vaikuntha okay. but his fellow decided to come and stay inside the stamba <laughs> if wherever this fellow is going to kick right and uh, he did all sorts of things in rama avatara krishna avatara going to forest suffering all kinds of things happen so why did he do this so there the poet says so being happy okay, just lying down in shesha is one option coming down and then relieving people from trouble is the second thing which was a possibility so he decided to choose the later so there he says tolayitva tolayitva means putting them into to trace in the balance so he felt that this is for better choice tolayitva janardana guruvim upakritim matva the upakriti is far more important it is heavier so avataran dasha agrahi so what is the message the message is when we want to reach out people there is no other option but to take some trouble but in taking the trouble and finally seeing the fruit the amount of joy that we will experience would be many fold than the comfort that we can enjoy by being where we are so any seva in sanskrit bharati is also like that any seva anywhere for that matter okay? we need to come out we need to leave certain things and for a larger purpose we have to commit ourselves it may be temporarily challenging and we feel like leaving it but one should not do in fact in one of the books that she gave me i saw that see so subhashitani there is only one line i found there okay. prarabdham uttama gunana parityajanti is there prarabdham uttama gunaha nabarityanti what is the rest vihata vihata vikramanti matya vignai puna puna pratihanya vignai puna puna rapi pratihanya rapi pratihanya see this is a beautiful message which is given by which is given by bhartrhari so what does he say prarabhyate na khalu vighna bhayena nichaihi so nicha is so those whose thinking is lowly that is what it means nicha means so a level of thinking is very low okay very confined limited vighna bhayena means out of the fear of vighna so that there could be obstacle thinking that there could be obstacle these fellows never ever take any initiative prarabhyate nakhalu vighna bhayena nichaihi then the middle level people he says okay prarabhyate means commenced nakhalu vighna bhayena out of the fear of obstacle 
न खलु विघ्न भयेन नीचैः प्रारभ्य हैविंग कमेंस्ड विघ्न विहता विरमन्ति मध्याः सपोज सो यू आर आस्क टू लर्न म्यूजिक इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट द टीचर इज आस्किंग मी डिमांडिंग टू मच आई एम लीविंग सो द एग्जाम इज टू डिफिकल्ट देयरफॉर आई एम लीविंग सो दीस थिंग्स कैन नॉट बी डन so we may have to get up at 4 get all it is required i remember in my childhood so some competition will be there my mother once she comes to know that there is a competition she will say you have to go <laughs> so that means sometimes i tell don't tell me mother <laughs> that means you may have to get up see you have to read so little take little more time right so sometimes as children so we try to avoid getting up so calls may be there two times three times so what she used to do was till one say if next time you don't get up then punishment could be there Anyway, no beating kind beating kind of thing. But what she she will will do is she will bring some water. <laughs> Then put into the ears. Couple of drops. So anyway, you will be <laughs> getting up. Okay. So what I am trying to say is, so those things may sound to be okay, okay, annoying to us. But they will be highly beneficial so it is a certain training to memorize things and that capacity will be extremely useful in the long run okay. so our brain has variety of potentials variety of skills so analysis is only one kind of a skill okay. so retaining things in memory is another kind of a skill and that will be extremely useful in a variety of ways so we don't understand those things so uh, some my fellows have floated some theory saying that you need not memorize etc that is all meaningless okay if i were to use the common language is bullshit <laughs> so this is what they say this is all just born out of something and there is another thing theory which keeps floating so children will be confused if you expose them to three four languages this is another stupid theory okay my mother has learned seven languages when she was in her childhood the brain's capacity cannot be underestimated it just comes why do you want to avoid people gaining out something out of it so some sort of a study some statistical study some fellow produces and then uh, we just go blindly following them okay so this is all not correct so here prarabhyate na khalu vighna bhayena nichaihi prarabhya vighna vihata viramanti madhyaha vighnai punas punarapi pratihanya manaha prarabdham uttama gunaha na paritejan he see if you have started studying for exams in sapal sanskrit bharati whatever see so you just can't drop okay if not now when are you going to learn and if at all so many people are putting so much of your efforts to enable you to learn then all of them are not idiots to compel somebody they feel that there is something so as children we may not be able to appreciate certain things at this age if we have to accept this we should not think ourselves to be sarvajnyas nobody is and uh, the thinking may be like okay. so why should i be doing why should i be doing you may not understand the benefit okay so this you heard that has been launched by people okay. so i know this natesha varya has been 
thinking of this kind of a structure, institution to be created for several years. It is only for the sake of providing a certain facility to make people learn things which are really worthy of processing and which will be beneficial for us in the long run. So this long run benefit is not generally understood by people. Okay? So therefore we need to develop what is called Shraddha and Bhakti. This is Shraddha and Bhakti. So we don't consume the medicine knowing pretty well how it is going to function in my body. Okay. So we just go by the advice of people and we just take it. So too, this is something which is born out of experience of hundreds and thousands of people. So this training here, okay, so with this language and the content of it, is going to be beneficial in the long run. So I started by saying the verse which I learned from her while I was <laughs> coming in the car. Chaya vanyasya kurvanti svayan tishthanti chatape Palanyapi Pararthaya Vriksha Satpurusha Iva. Yesterday, in Lakshmi Narayan's place, we had an occasion to read a few verses from Valmiki Ramayana. That also has an important lesson. And with that, I will try to conclude. So some lady who came, she asked, so can we read a few verses from Sundara Kanda? Okay. How many Kandas are there in Ramayana? Eight? No. Seven. Seven. Okay, name? Bala. Oh. Aranya. Yudha. Hmm. Uttarakanda. There are seven. Now, in this, so we started by reading one or two verses in Sundarakanda. Then I got reminded of some story. So we traced it. The story goes as narration by Sita to Hanuma. So there are different instances in which the dialogue happened between Sita and Hanuma. What is the first instance? Sorry. Hanuman goes and meets Sita in where? Ashokavana. Right? So Ashokavana. So this is before the battle. So that's the content of Sundara Kanda primarily. And in Yuddha Kanda, once again after Rama slayed Ravana, so Hanuman once again goes and meets Sita okay, to convey the message that the battle is over and you can come and join Rama. So it is the occasion. So there, having gone and met Sita, having conveyed the message, Hanuman asks one more thing to Sita. The thing that he asks is, in my earlier visit, I saw many of these Rakshasis threatening you, troubling you and so on. So they were all threatening Sita, trying to convince her to go with Ravana and so on. So Sita was seriously troubled by these people and Hanuman was perturbed by that scene. But he couldn't do much on that occasion. He just left. Now he is asking Sita, do I punish these Rakshasis? Okay. So this is the question that he asks. So what do you think 
Sita's response should be. <laughs> if somebody has been seriously troubling you, we would be happy that they are troubled or not. No? You should know. Why? Why should? Huh? Tell me. Huh? They are doing their karma. What did you say? No, like they'll get, they'll like face the consequences of what they're doing. Huh? I'm asking. So Hanuman's idea was to make them face the consequence. Right? So Sita should accept or should not accept. If somebody is troubling you on the road, okay, should the police punish that fellow or not? In the schools, colleges, people rag other fellows, right? Ragging is considered as an offense. Uh, bullying, ragging. Hazing. Hazing huh? They call it hazing in this country. H-A-Z-I-N-G. H-A-Z-I-N-G. Hazing. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> so Sita was uh, terribly <clears throat> annoyed, put into deep trouble. So Hanuman feels that they need to be punished. Hmm. What would be your response if you were Sita? <laughs> so Sita's first reaction is she says that no they don't deserve any kind of a punishment. So the reason that she says is it is true that I underwent suffering at the hands of them. But the suffering that I underwent was because they were directed to do so. They were directed by Ravana to do so and therefore they did. And therefore these people are innocent by themselves. They did not have any intention to trouble me in the first level of response. So this is perfectly understandable. Then she further says, even if they were to do on their own, I wouldn't accept you and any other people putting them into trouble. Is the second level of response that she says. Even if they were, see, some people given some opportunity, okay, by law, they will try to harass people 100 times. Okay, it is like our immigration officers. <laughs> see, when I came, I was detained for half an hour for no reason. Okay, those fellows did not understand what is Sanskrit Bharati and what is Sanskrit language. And in spite of explaining several times, so they sent me to another room and then another investigation. So doing much more than what is it? I told I have come here 10 times. Okay. So the same we saw. He said, did, does the embassy know that you are coming here? I said, why should the embassy know? I said, I have a valid visa. <laughs> So all sorts of nonsensical questions. Okay. So they, they take some joy in troubling others. Okay. Some people do this. I have seen this, some security fellows will do. Some immigration officers will do. Okay, anyway. So now Sita's response to Hanuman was twofold. One is they are innocent by themselves. And therefore, they don't deserve punishment. And even if they have acted too much okay, on their own, if they wanted to 
trouble me and they had troubled even then i wouldn't want them to be punished so this is what she says in fact if you see the ramayana there were some rakshasis though all of them were instructed uniformly by ravana some of them were trying to have some concern for sita okay some did what they are supposed to do and some overacted all these things were there so keeping all the group in mind she says no this should not be done okay and then she actually quotes a story okay that was what very interesting so she says that i have heard in my childhood a story and as per the story there is a bear bear the animal it is called balluka okay or riksha in sanskrit okay. riksha means bear and balluka is also used to refer to it so she quotes something and then says this is what i have read as the vachana of the balluka చెప్పు <laughs> 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 వెరీ గుడ్ సూ సిరేషాం పాపకర్మణ then there is yeah i tried to keep it in my mind it will come back <laughs> yesterday i read na para papa madatte paresham papa karmanam samayo rakshita vyastu ho 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 rakshita vyastu then there is um, samayo rakshita vyastu so let us leave this quarter i said that next to us then it may come papa nam va shubha nam va papa nam va shubha nam va papa nam va shubha nam va vadhar hanam plavangama vadhar hanam plavangama vadhar hanam plavangama plavangama కార్యం కరుణమార్యేణ కార్యం కరుణమార్యేణ కార్యం కరుణమార్యేణ న కశ్చిన్నాపరాధ్యతి న కశ్చిన్నాపరాధ్యతి దర్ ఆర్ త్రీ లెవెల్స్ ఆఫ్ రెస్పాన్స్ ఐ షేర్ విత్ యూ టూ వన్ మోర్ ఐ విల్ టెల్ యూ so the story that she narrates is the story that she narrates is so there was a tiger which was chasing a hunter okay a tiger was chasing a hunter this hunter quickly climbed upon a tree see tiger is heavy so it's not a good climber on the tree so he wanted to protect himself therefore he climbed on the tree but as he climbed upon so he noted some bear sitting on the tree you see <laughs> so some bear is sitting on the branch of the tree now this fellow was scared what do i do so both ways i am in trouble if i get down tiger may punish me if i go there the bear may eat me so what do i do so this is the situation then the bear says don't worry 
I will not trouble you. In fact, I will be very happy to protect you. So you can come and take rest here near me. So this is what the bear sees. So this fellow goes and sits there. Okay. So because he ran for a long time, he was tired. He felt also a little asleep. Bear said, don't worry, you sleep, I will take care. Okay. Now, the tiger converses with the bear. This fellow is a hunter. So today, he may hit you. Tomorrow, he may hit me. So his job is to finish animals. So we are all animal community. So he is an enemy to the animal community. So you just push him down, I will take care. <laughs> okay. So he is a common Shatru. Okay. So there is no reason to protect this fellow. So this is what Tiger says. It looks like appealing argument. But then the bear says, no. See, this is my tree. Knowingly or unknowingly, he has come to me. Okay. So taking refuge and therefore it is my duty to save him. So I will not let him go down. Okay. So you go away. But the tiger does not go away. So it was just waiting. Anyway, after some time, this fellow has to come down. So I will take care. So it was just him. So after some time, so this fellow wakes up. And then the bear goes to sleep. Okay. Now, this tiger says, okay, so you have an option. I am going to wait. Either <laughs> you lose your life or you help me by pushing down the bear, I will take care. <laughs> See, my needs will be over, I will leave you. Okay. So, this fellow thought that was a good idea to push the bear down. <laughs> okay. He pushed the bear down. And then bear, see, by virtue of its own skills, before going down, it clicks to some other branch and then comes up. Okay. So this fellow was really terrified. Okay. So now I am in trouble, he thinks. Even then, the bear says, don't worry, my dear. I am not going to push you down. Okay. Neither I am going to finish you, nor I am going to push you down. So you feel comfortable. So I have already given you a refuge. And even if you try to do something which is harmful to me, I will not harm you. Okay. So this is a very powerful message. So there is a Subhashita which says, Upakarishu yes sadhu, sadhu tve tasya ko gunaha. Upakarishu yes sadhu, sa sadhu sadhir uchiyate. Understand? So, upakarishu yes sadhu. If you are good to someone who did good to you, then at least you are not a bad fellow. Okay? You are not a kritagna. Sadhu tve tasya ko gunaha. What is great about it? Apakarishu yes sadhu. Even those who trouble you, if you are good to them, sa sadhu hu sadhi He is a real sadhu. So the message that Sita gives is to Hanuman, even if they had done the sapakara, ah, the fourth quarter came to my mind, Santas Charitra Bhushana. Huh, tell Santas Charitra Bhushana. Santas Charitra Bhushana. So, what is the verse? Naparaf Papa Madate Paresham Papa Karmanam Samayo Rakshita Vyastu Santas Charitra Bhushana. This is a very beautiful verse. See. Paraha 
பாபம் ந ஆதத்தே பரேஷாம் பாபகர்மா இன்ஃபேக்ட் திஸ் திஸ் ஹாஃப் ஆஃப் த வேர்ஸ் கேன் பி இன்டர்பிரட்டட் இன் டூ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் வேஸ் டேக்கிங் போத் த பொசிஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் சீதா ஸோ த வேர்ட்ஸ் ஆர் லைக் தட் பரஹா பாபம் ந ஆதத்தே பரேஷாம் பாபகர்மணாம் so here the word paraha refers to rakshasya okay papam na adatte so they don't incur sin why because they were prompted to do himsa by somebody else paresham papa karma naam okay the papa karma is ravana and because of his papa these people are not to be considered sinners this is one way of understanding naparaf papam adatte paresham papakarmanam and therefore they don't deserve any punishment the other way of looking at it is see, so with respect to the hunter after all so this verse goes as the saying of the bear so paraha papam na adatte here this first parasabda can be taken as referring to bear itself just because you committed something to me i am not going to commit something to you see paraha ayam rikshah papam na adatte papa karmam na kurute papa karma na kurute see பரேஷாம் பாபகர்மணாம் தயா தாதுசம் கர்ம ஆச்சரிதம் இது திருஷ்டுவா மயா தத் ந கிரியத்தே ந பரஃப் பாபம் ஆதத்தே பரேஷாம் பாபகர்மணாம் ஸோ தட் ஈஸ் சப்ஸ்டான்ஷியேட்டட் பை சேயிங் சமயோ ரக்ஷிதவியஸ்து சி சமயா மீன்ஸ் the noble principles which are there in the society it has to be necessarily protected samayo rakshita vyastu finally it says santas charitra bhushana so santaha noble people charitra bhushana their ornament is only character see charitra meva bhushanam charitra bhushana so it indi- indirectly teaches that fellow see that you cannot do this and even if you do this i am not going to harm you so this is the highest level so this is the highest level of nobility that a human being can exhibit see you know our own families so that's why there is a wonderful saying tamil la kuda undu yes நன்றி மறப்பது நன்றன்று நன்றல்லது அன்றே மறப்பது நன்று இட்ஸ் ஏஸ் எனி குட் திங் தட் ஹஸ் பீன் டன் பை எனி படி டு யூ யூ ஷுட் நெவர் ஃபர் கெட் அண்ட் எனி திங் விச் ஹேஸ் டிஸ்டர்ப் யூ யூ ஷுட் இம்மிடியட்லி ஃபர் கெட் நன்றல்லது அன்றே மறப்பது நன்று சி இட் இஸ் ஹியூமன் டெண்டன்சி டு டூ தி அதர் வேர் so therefore it is said nandi marappadu nandrandu in fact one of the ramagunas stated by dasharatha yesterday we were trying to recollect so this verse i was not sharing with you so there is a beautiful verse he says nasmarat yapakaranam shatam apyatmavattaya kathanchi dupakarena utenaikena tushyat so this is one of the characters of rama so hallmarks of rama nasmarati means he would never ever remember apakaranam shatam api even if they are done hundreds of times nasmarati apakaranam shatam api atmavattaya kathanchid upakarena ஸ்மால் உபகாரா டன் பை எனிபடி அட் எனி பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் டைம் யூ வுட் ரிமெம்பர் 
so the overall message of this talk is so our janma is meant for serving the society if for serving the society we need to discipline ourselves so how do we discipline ourselves by trying to listen to right things watch how the noble people conduct themselves read stories which will be extremely beneficial in trying to shape you without knowing that you are shaped okay. that is what it is whether it is panchatantra ramayana or mahabharata so they all carry very powerful message and these messages when they enter into the young minds in the impressionable age so it will automatically form a certain samskara which will give the right direction okay so this uh, principle of paropakara has been stated in very many ways and the last verse that i am going to share with you is okay श्लोकाधेन प्रवक्षा श्लोका ग्रंथकोटिषु परोपकार पापाय परपीडन so providing comfort to others starting from our own parents okay is punyaya and hurting others is papaya that's it okay so we need to decide what we want to do and orient our actions in such a way that this purpose is fulfilled so many of us may have intent but the actions may not be appropriately oriented that requires repeated thinking and this repeated thinking forms a certain samskara which will provide the necessary impulse at the right time so that others are not hurt so with this i conclude my talk <laughs> the address to these children any question chapo you know some words ప్రశ్న 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 వద్దు శ్లోక చెప్పు ఇక్కడ రా తెలిసింది కదా రాలేదా గుర్తులేదా ఓకే తర్హి ఇదం సత్రం సమాపయామ పూర్ణిమాగతవతీ